Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Dana. I'm so happy to have you. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a tag. I feel like I have not done one of these in forever. I know I'm a little bit behind because I think this tag's been going around for like two months now. I've still been going through and anytime I like sit down and get ready, I pretty much type in this video every day to see if like anybody new has posted it just because it really gives me inspiration to go through, dig through my collection and pull out a new palette. So if that didn't drop some hints for you, today's video is going to be the palette tag. This tag was created by Allie Glines and Samantha March. I'll be sure to link their videos down below. So there's just a list of a few different categories. Some of them I kind of cheated because it was really hard to just pick one. Eyeshadow palettes and I think bronzers are some of like my all-time favorite makeup products and foundation and concealer. But if I had to pick one, it probably would be eyeshadow palettes. I've recently been really good about decluttering palettes. I got rid of so many, so I still need to edit that video. I know I'm behind, don't judge, but let's go ahead and get right into it. I have my list over here. So the very first question was newest palette. Now this isn't one that I purchased. I received it as PR, the Urban Decay Naked Ultraviolet Palette. I've only worn this twice so far. To be honest, I'm not quite sure how I feel about it yet. I do really like the shade VR. I think that's so beautiful all over the lid, especially if you go in and add some of the Danessa Myricks nebula shadow that I showed in my favorites video. It just creates like the most magical, just luminescent sparkle city lid. It's so pretty, but none of these shadows are something that like I could, I mean, honestly, I could live without any single eyeshadow, but I just don't get that excited when I use this palette, but it is my newest palette. So I still had to talk about it, right? The other palettes I definitely get way more excited about. Okay, moving on to question number two, we have oldest palette. This is where I have two because I'm not quite positive. I'm pretty sure that the Urban Decay Naked palette is older, but I feel like these came out around the same time. So this is the Urban Decay Naked palette and this is actually my very first original one. I have kept it just for sheer sentimental reasons. Clearly I love the shade Virgin Sin, Naked and Half Baked were some of my most used palettes. This definitely changed the palette game, you know, before there were, there were eyeshadow palettes before this, but when it came to just like a good neutral palette, this was definitely the one. But since then, I definitely think they've come way further just with having more like warm shades. <laughs> I say I like that more just because that's personal preference, but also like palettes that offer more matte shades too, because in here you really only got those two matte shades. Everything else was either like metallic or shimmer. It did come with a dual end brush, but yeah, this was my very first high-end eyeshadow palette. I think I'm between this one and then this is another doozy. I mean, it's so old, but I love this palette so much. This is the Stila in the Light palette. I had the, I think it was called like garden something or fairy something. It was like a light sage color. Oh my gosh. Kitten was one of my all time favorites. I loved Gilded Gold. It came with a retractable eyeliner. I think they call them smudge sticks though. And I think the shade was called Lionfish. It was this amazing, like really rich, just gorgeous warm brown with like little flecks of golden shimmers. This was another palette I absolutely loved. I didn't play too much with these here, but I mean, Kitten, you just need the tiny swipe. It's still just as buttery as when I first got it. You can even use this like as a face highlighter if you just go in with a really sheer wash. I don't know why they discontinued this. this I know, I know Stila still makes like the palettes in the harder, what is it like? eyes are the window or windows of the eyes, something like that. But I definitely prefer the formula of their original shadows. They were really, really good. So I'm not quite sure which one is older. For some reason, Urban Decay Naked really does stick out more, but I want to say that these came out close to each other. I tried looking online and all of the dates were pretty similar. I couldn't find like an actual release date. The most expensive palette in my collection, I actually didn't even purchase myself. Laura had ordered one and then she received an extra as PR. So she was gracious enough and gave it to me. The this is the Natasha Denona Sunset Palette. I'm pretty sure this retails for like $129, something insane like that. While I do love this palette, the pigmentation is beautiful. The color story is definitely right up my alley. I just can't justify that price point. Maybe if there were a ton more shadows in here, but like the Huda Beauty palettes, you get, okay, in here you have one, two, three, four, five, 15 shadows in the Huda Beauty palette, one, two, three, four, five, six times three, 18. And these are $65, this one's 128 or $129. I just, 
I can't, I can't do it. I love it, but I would just never purchase one myself. I know that her palettes now are a little bit less. For instance, the bronze palette that was just released. That's the same price as the Huda Beauty palette. I'm not quite sure how many shadows come in that one, if it's like a similar size or not. I will say whenever Natasha Denona released that Safari palette, I think it was Safari, the one that had like the really gorgeous like matte olives and stuff, I was interested, but I just, I couldn't do it. That, that's just insane. No, I just can't. 120 something dollars for eyeshadow. I love eyeshadow, but I have so many to where I feel like I could build an amazing ColourPop palette or Makeup Geek palette for that same price and get way more shadow. So that one I just, ugh. okay. Um, most affordable. Originally, I was gonna pull out my e.l.f., those new little bite size palettes, but technically they're quads because there's only four shadows. So in my mind, you have to have at least five, right, to have a palette. So I went with the Wet n Wild Rose in the air. I also love the, isn't it just a peach? Something like that. The one that has like oranges and comes with a turquoise. These palettes are really good and they're only like $4.50 or $4.99. And a lot of the time you can find them at Ulta for buy one, get one half off. This one just has some great matte shades in here. There are two shimmers, but I find the quality of these to be great. Even way back in the day, whenever Wet n Wild had the eight pan palettes, they've just always made really great shadows. During the holidays, for instance, last, was it last year? Yeah, last year during Halloween, they released several of these. Coffin Break was really pretty. Um, I think there was something called something graveyard with just really pretty shades moving on the next category is everyday palette Now obviously this is one that kind of changes year by year for instance like five years ago It probably would have been the Lorac unzipped palette last year. It was probably one of my million color pop Pre-made shadows, but I would say just from the last year or I guess maybe like last eight or nine months. I'm not quite sure how long this palette has been out. I feel like I use this every single day. It's just a really easy palette that I can reach for. Whenever I travel, it's one that I instantly put in my makeup bag because I can create several looks out of it. I know it's kind of got mixed reviews. I personally love this palette so much. I find all the shades to perform great. I love that you have a great mixture of both matte shades and shimmer shades. I will say if you've used this palette before and you thought the metallics weren't that great, I highly recommend using them with your finger. I typically do that for my lid shade, no matter what type of palette I'm using. I just feel like I can get the most concentrated amount of color on my lid and really pack it on. Especially with hooded lids, it's just easier for me to go in with like my ring finger to where I can really wedge into that tiny bit of real estate and pack the color on, but it's just a palette I adore. Rose gold is one of my favorite shades in here. Maple is so beautiful in the crease. If you love just like a really beautiful warm camel shade, especially on days whenever you're just doing like a one and done type of makeup look, maple is beautiful. I just love this palette overall. So that has been my everyday palette. Wow, that was not necessary. Okay, moving on to most colorful palette. This is a newer one in my collection. To be honest, I've only used like four of the shades in here. This is the Urban Decay Wired palette. So this came out a long time ago, but then I think, I don't know if it got pulled completely or if they just repackaged it. But when I think colorful, this is what I think of. Obviously I have other palettes that have like colors as well as a ton of neutrals, but I was just thinking like straight up like Roy G. Biv vibes and this gave it to me. In here, the only shades that I've really played with so far are Switch, Slow Burn, and Savage that created such a beautiful kind of like tropical, beachy, spring break type of look. I definitely do need to go in and play with it some more. So you have shades here that are for the face, body, and eye, and then for face and body. And guess what? Those are the three shades that I was also using <laughs> on my eyes. Not saying you should do the same, but yeah, I definitely use that on my eyes. To be honest, I didn't even read that top line until just now. That's probably why my eyelids were stained for a good day now that I think about that, but it's okay. The eye look was worth it. We have smallest. I have two and I have to share both just because they are both so stinking cute. This is the one that I notice in pretty much every single person's Palette tag is one of the NARS mini shadows. This is the mini eyeshadow in Wanted. They actually just released another one of these for the orgasm collection that just launched. I do plan on doing, ew, I'm sitting here holding a rogue hair. I need a haircut so bad. My hair is like getting stuck like in my armpits, in the car door everywhere it's it's ridiculous it's so long if you are looking for an extra mini palette with even more shades this is the mcqueen in new york this is a kbd brand i did use this in a kbd try on video that i'll go ahead and link here these perform great they're tiny but they're mighty and i absolutely love the color story in here they definitely are softer but i mean the metallics in here are so pretty the mattes are great as well but look how small it just creates such a beautiful like 
peachy coral type of look. It just makes me happy to look at. I love this one. Okay, and then the exact opposite of smallest is the biggest palette. Now, if we're just talking any palette and not pre-made palette, it would be the Give Me Glow XXL Pro Custom Palettes. This is where I store a ton of like my ColourPop and Makeup Geek shadows. So we have one full of my colorful shades and then this, I reach for this guy a lot. It's a big daddy, but just full of tons of different neutrals. I love this so much just because it's nice to have everything in one, but then whenever I travel, I just pull out a few and add them into a smaller like Z palette or Makeup Geek palette. That's why there's a few missing in here. I need to actually go back in and put those back in their rightful place. But if we're talking pre-made palettes, which I think that is what this tag is supposed to be, it would be one of the Pro Fusion. This is the Mirage palette. You get 35 shades in here. These are so affordable. You can find them at Target, at Walmart, on Pro Fusion's site. I'm not sure if this one is still available in store or not. They have so many different color stories. I've decluttered a majority of them, but out of all of them that I had, which I think at one point I had like four or five, Mirage is definitely my favorite. I just love oranges and purples, especially together. That's why I love one of the palettes I'm going to talk about here shortly. We have Best Memory. Right off the bat, I would say one of my MAC palettes. This I actually depotted and then put back into one of their newer palettes. That way I could see through because it was in one of the original thin MAC palettes. So a lot of these shadows are incredibly old. We have Woodwinked in here. What is this one called? I can't even think. I just remember the joy I got whenever I filled this palette. Several of these had to be replaced because I used to have, I think like rice paper in here, rice paper, woodwinked, soft brown, and something else. Those were like my very first four MAC shadows, but I just remember saving up my money and going through just to like add a new pan every so often. Worth the hype. For me, the Huda Beauty palettes are definitely worth the hype. I realize they're $65. I was just complaining about Natasha Denona whenever her palettes, well, some of them are now $65, but these are 100% worth the hype for me. Desert Dusk is one of my like all-time favorite palettes. Whenever this first released, I could not put this palette down. It was like the only palette I was using for months and months. I just really love like purples and oranges, especially on brown or hazel eyes. I just really find that they help your eyes to pop. I'm doing an eyeshadow palette video and I just realized I'm not wearing a stitch of eyeshadow. Not quite sure how that worked out, but at $65, it definitely is a heftier price point, but I just love these palettes so much. I have the nude one, I have rose gold, I have desert dusk. I didn't buy, wasn't it like retrograde? Is that her latest one? I feel like there's actually two that I haven't purchased, but those ones, I don't know, the colors weren't as exciting to me, just like the really frosty, metallic-y shades. Don't get me wrong, I love glittery shades, but something about these two, I just adore so much. So if these color stories are up your alley and you have an extra $65 to spend, I would highly recommend them. I adore them. Okay, moving on to not worth the hype. Now, I love the brand Charlotte Tilbury. I think she makes amazing complexion products. When this palette first came out, I really did like it, but I just don't know if it's really worth the hype for the price point. This is the Stars in Your Eyes palette. It is beautiful. I do still use it, but I just don't really think her palettes are worth the hype. I always see people raving about like her mini, is it like five or six pan palettes? And I'm never turned on just because like this one, like I said, I do like it, it is pretty, but I feel like I have ColourPop shadows that I like just as much and perform just as well, if not better to wear. I just don't know. I don't, I feel bad saying that because, and I don't want you to think that I don't like it because at one point I really did and I was using it a ton, but I just don't know if her shadows are quite worth the hype in comparison to her complexion products. For instance, her Hollywood Flawless Filter, I love that stuff. That's a product that I will buy till like the end of time, but I just don't know if her eyeshadows are really her strong suit. I hate to sound like a negative Nancy. That makes me sad when everything else I've been kind of like raving about. Whatever, moving on. So we did worth the hype, not worth the hype. Favorite from a favorite brand. This was so easy for me, Juvia's Place. I did several Instagram stories just talking about some of my favorite Juvia's Place palettes. The Nubian 2 and the Masquerade Mini are some of my all-time favorites. I really wanna get, I think it's called, is it Nomad? There's one that has like matte, um, olive greens, browns, and blacks. It just looks really pretty. The price point of her palettes is insane for the quality that you get and the amount, like in the shadow pans. 
but the Nubian 2 I just absolutely love. I use this palette so much and I haven't even created a single dent yet. Her palettes just really pack a punch. The metallics are so buttery and smooth. Her mattes are so rich. They blend beautifully. Morocco is one of my all-time favorite shades. Jezebel is beautiful too, going back to the whole orange and purple or orange and plum vibes. I just love her shadows so much. Like I said, the other one that I really like is the Masquerade Mini, but if I had to pick one, it would definitely be the Nubian 2. Okay, and then finally we have the most used palette. This is a palette that I use so much that I actually had to buy a second one because I accidentally broke a shade, but then I finished up my favorite shade in the palette. And that is the ColourPop Sweet Talk palette. I'm pretty sure this is only like 16 or $18. You definitely have to be a fan of like peachy, corally type of shades. I just adore this palette so much. Anytime I wear this, I always love the overall finished look in here, but I had completely finished the shade Work It and then I was almost done with Meadow. I just love those two shades in the crease. I think they're absolutely beautiful. I know people have mixed feelings about the glitters. They're not technically eye safe. I wear them on my eyelids, but do as I say, not as I do. I always get confused when I say that. I'm like, was that right? I think that was right. Um, but side to side, I love that all over the lid. I just, if you like oranges and peach shades and you haven't used this one before, you must try it. It is so beautiful. Something about it just applies differently on the eyes than it looks in the pan. Like I feel like in the pan, this just looks like a great warm corally type of palette but on your eyes all the shades are just way punchier in person for instance meadow looks really soft in the pan but on your eyes it just really pops i would love to hear all about some of your favorite eyeshadow palettes your most used palette or your everyday palette let me know down below as always thank you so much for spending part of your day with me if you haven't already be sure to subscribe that way you don't miss out on any future content let me know what other videos you guys would like to see this week and that's pretty much it so i will see you guys next time Bye.